So what do you tell people? I mean, what do you tell Dia? You know, on college of the community because this, that trial was interpreted, if I'm not mistaken, and Sarah and the rest of you can kind of comment on this, you know, and Terry, you know, it was interpreted as a negative trial for nabapaclitaxel, that we shouldn't be using it, it's clearly not any better, and it's more expensive. So, but how do you interpret that data? Do you interpret it that way? Well, you know, it's interesting because that is actually the, da the conclusion of the data, so right. you can't argue with that. Correct. But uh, I, don't, I, ha I never gave 150 per meter squared. I thought it was too high a dose from the beginning. And I don't know that, you know, it's an interesting thing. There are still people out there that really believe that more is better. But we have had a very hard time showing that more is better except for what we think is standard in HER2-positive diseases better than less. So, you know, you have to kind of stay, take a step back and figure that giving a higher dose is, does not clearly give you benefits in overcoming resistance that are long lasting because you cause a lot of toxicity and you run out of the ability to give drug. Paclitaxel, Eric Weiner published that. So what I, I, I like the phase two data on NAB paclitaxel, looking at 100 per meter squared and showing that it was effective even in patients who had disease resistant to paclitaxel and docetaxel, published by Joanne Blum from US Oncology. So uh, that's the dose I use. And what I say is that, yes, it's more expensive. So if a patient hasn't had paclitaxel, you could use paclitaxel. If there's a reason not to give steroids or there's a reason to use another agent, maybe they've had paclitaxel before, they have underlying neuropathy where we believe that 100 causes a little less, you recover a little faster, then I use NAB paclitaxel. Yeah, Terry, I mean, I think that in, in NRG now and all, you know, in the surgical trials and in the, in the neoadjuvant trials, did you guys ever think about using NAB paclitaxel at all in any of your trials? Well, we haven't. I mean, we have talks in the past about incorporating it in some of the neoadjuvant trials, uh, but because uh, it did not have an approval in the early stage uh, setting, we, we have not used it. Uh, clearly, it has shown efficacy uh, as good as that of, of paclitaxel. Um, and we have used it uh, occasionally on some of our foundation trials. In fact, we published one uh, with uh, uh, now paclitaxel followed by FEC uh, in the neoadjuvant setting with good activity both in near negative and I'm sorry, near negative and HER2 positive breast cancer. But we have not used it in a major trial um, as of now. I think the main benefits of using it are what Hope's already raised, which is the avoidance of steroids. And in the metastatic setting, that, that can be nice for patients because quality of life, being up all night with the steroids, and mm -hmm. if you have a comorbidity of diabetes, um, that can be a problem. It's a shorter infusion. Um, I've only used it once or twice in the early breast cancer setting, and it was only in cases where a patient had a severe life-threatening allergic reaction to paclitaxel. Um, or docetaxel, and so I was able to get it approved and use it there. But I don't think any of us are, are riveted by efficacy data. Um, I, I agree with Hope. It's something that I might try in somebody later who had an original response with paclitaxel early on and then progressed and were running out of agents, but she's healthy enough with a good enough performance status to receive more chemo, and I've used it in that setting. Um, you know, with the hope that we can get a little more of a response in a little bit more time. Well, let me throw a case out, and there's literally a woman who emailed me this morning, okay? So, two, a two centimeter tumor, you know, triple negative. She, you know, we started on our standard therapy for that node negative. Standard therapy for it was docetaxel and cyclophosphamide. She had three cycles of it. After the second cycle, she began to have severe allergic reaction. Just a delayed allergic reaction, not an early I've one. Seen that. This is terrible. Mm -hmm. Hives, yeah. skin reaction, just skin, off skin. skin rash. And so she emails me this morning, miserable. She's already had her third dose. She's coming in next week for her fourth dose. Dr. Grusky, I can't do this anymore. I just can't. You know, I just cannot do this. What can I do? So what would you do? Would you give this woman NAB paclitaxel? You know, this is a difficult case because she got TC. And right. so the TC is hard because we don't have any paclitaxel similar regimen. So I think that, you know, with that patient, you know, she got three cycles. The question is, could you give her some more steroids, get her through her fourth cycle, et cetera. But a very similar case to that, 
I have a patient who went on our neoadjuvant trial with uh, paclitaxel, pertuzumab, and trastuzumab for her T-positive disease. Which we'll get to in a few minutes, but yes, go ahead. She had horrible skin toxicity, burning. She said, this is so miserable. I thought it was going to be nausea, and it's all this skin burning and rash. I switched her to nab paclitaxel. Symptoms completely resolved, 100%. So I have done that. The, also, I had a patient with interstitial pneumonitis, the same thing, switched to nab paclitaxel. Very worried. I had the same, but, same situation. Yeah. yeah. So interstitial pneumonitis. Yeah, pneumonitis really? with taxane was triple negative. And yeah, I had the same. same her oncologist negative. was petrified of giving her any taxane, right. and I was the brave or dumb soul who decided we're going to try a little some, steroid. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that gets back to the community. So, Dia, what do you? I mean, do you guys use NAPACA? Uh, we do, and and it is very very useful in the community. For one, the uh, the shorter infusions, the no no pre medication with the steroids. I do agree that I wouldn't uh, substitute in a in a TC uh, regimen, for example. So I wouldn't substitute. Um, I find that the neuropathy resolves quicker. Uh, dose adjustments. Uh, to fatigue is, 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 is really the, uh, uh, the biggest complaint I get with nap paclitaxel. But with a little bit of dose adjusting, patients tend to tolerate it well. And uh, as a community oncologist, it is a very, uh, uh, a very useful taxane. And I, especially since it does have activity after having had uh, exposure to, uh, uh, to the other taxanes. Great. Yeah.